That's one of my favorite cuts in an album that's impressed me so much that I wanted to bring the fellow responsible for it into the studio. We've been featuring cuts from the album all day, and we're going to find out more about it right now by talking to Maurice Anderson. Hi, Maurice. Hi, Bryce. And appreciate you coming to the studio today. Well, thank you very much for asking. Now, to put things on a more casual basis, your best friends call you Reese, do they not? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm one of your best friends because you've won me over with this great music. Uh, Let me get down first to something about you, and then we'll keep on reviewing the music. Uh, first, Reese, when did you start with steel guitar? Well, I actually started playing back in about 1954. Did you start in, job. Uh, I would assume, uh, in country and western? Yes, uh, I started uh, with what was considered a western band back then. Everybody, that was back in the swing type era. Uh, what made you move into other fields with it? Well, I just tried to keep up with the western music for what was going on in the western field for a number of years because this instrument was not accepted, actually, in any other field other than western. So it was the only place for it. Well, then for a good many years, you made your living playing guitar. So oh, yeah. it should be pointed out at this time that although you at home, of course, can't see this, you've brought along uh, your steel guitar. And it doesn't look like any steel guitar I've ever seen. To begin with, uh, shouldn't it have two necks? Well, most of them today have two necks. Uh, well, do you have pri- a shortage of necks? or uh, what? Well, no. Uh, primarily, they use one neck for playing the country type and music, and then the other neck they use for playing the more modern things. Pop well, now... Jazz. Let me ask you, this uh, uh, would be the guitar that you use for country then, right? Well, no, this guitar here, uh, with enough pedals on it, you can play country and modern and jazz and all on one neck. Where uh, if you don't have as many pedals or as many strings, then it usually takes two necks to play it. But I believe that one neck is sufficient to play any type of music if you have enough pedals on it. Well, I don't want to make you feel uh, self-conscious about your guitar by going on about its... uh, it's differentness, but it is a very attractive instrument. Well, Would you describe you it to the people at home? Uh, yes, uh, my guitar has uh, five floor pedals and five knee levers on it, and it's a single neck with 12 strings. As you can see, it's rosewood guitar, but that looks like rosewood, but it's actually for mica. It's very durable. This is the only instrument I know of that you play, or the steel guitar itself is, that you play with both feet, both hands, and now both knees. Well, would this be necessary to be an octopus in order to get all the music well, out of the... Well, that would certainly help, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, Reese, quite obviously, from looking at the instrument, this is a, an incredibly complicated space-age-looking thing. So I assume this isn't something that you uh, build in your garage over the weekend with spare parts lying around the house, right? <laughs> certainly not. No, we, we have a factory here, and uh, we have uh, all the facilities necessary to manufacturing. What uh, caused the transition from well, the artist to the businessman? Well, uh, I couldn't find a guitar that I liked, to be honest with you. I played a lot of guitars and none of them seemed to have the feel that I wanted to have in a steel guitar. So uh, I met my partner. He was already building guitars and we just got together and uh, come up with a guitar that we thought a steel guitar ought to play like. Well, you make it sound awfully simple. But uh, there must have been more to it than that. You had an idea. Uh, he had the know-how. And uh, what about financing? What about uh, well, finding a place to work and getting skimpy, people to believe? We started, we started in a double garage back in the back of a house, not too far from where our factory is now. And we've, of course, went into what we have now. I have a partner, uh, Tom Morell. And we've been manufacturing these guitars here in Dallas for the last eight years. It would take, I assume, uh, some pretty skilled labor to put together something this beautiful. It really does. It takes a long time to, to design it in the first place. And after you do that, it takes uh, quite a craftsman to put them together. You can't have uh, someone to come in off the street that's mechanically inclined that can do it and make it work. Uh, everybody that touches our steel guitars when they're made is a professional steel guitar player. And it's, I think that's the way it should be to get the best quality. Uh, do you uh, build it from the ground up, which is to say, do you produce your own parts? Or? Yes, we, we have all the machinery and everything. We do it all right here. Now, I was especially impressed in the last recording that we were listening to with some, uh, some of the things you did 
on the guitar. I'm wondering if you would uh, take a few seconds out to, to demonstrate what you did and how you did it. Well, I'd be glad to. It'll be it'll sound pretty empty because I don't have the, all the musicians with me, but uh, I'll be glad to do it for you. Okay, let's hear it. was fantastic. Well, thank you. It's nothing really. <laughs> Believe me, <laughs> it it's certainly nothing. wasn't. Believe me, <laughs> folks. We're only kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, it was really young. Yes, I know that the music we heard was only from one album. Well, you know, originally I had an album that I come out with that you were nice enough to bring me on the show and interview it uh, or preview it for me a few years back. Well, I sold out of that album. and uh, But I've come out with a new double album. And, but I'm going to repress the first one again, so I'm offering a three-album uh, package deal. Well, certainly for the people who missed the first, which was something up to that time I'd never run across. It was, uh, to bring people up, jazz guitar. It was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> this gives them a wide variety of music, but uh, to begin with, isn't this kind of a radical idea? Not only a, uh, an electric guitar album, but three albums in a, in a, well, in a I, set? Well, I guess it is kind of... Uh, different, but it seems like today that's what it takes to make people uh, notice that, uh, well, like a steel guitar, it's uh, it's the newest instrument I know of. It's the youngest by far. And it's just never been in any other fields other than country and western and uh, Hawaiian music, which is where it originated, I'm sure. Once again, talking about country and western music, although you do have some country and western music in one of the albums, you also go far afield in other directions. Well, I tried to play uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, a lot of people really don't realize the potential of the steel guitar in all fields of music, and uh, so that's the reason I tried to do a little bit of a lot of different kinds of music on the album to kind of show the versatility of the instrument. Will these be available in record stores? Not at the present time, maybe at a later date, but we're not planning on it in the near future. Then we do have a specific uh, place to write for the albums. That's right, right now, here at the factory. Now we've talked about country and western music on the steel guitar, uh, one of the albums has even a Hawaiian touch. And now I want to ask if you give us just a brief demonstration of what you do to progressive jazz on the steel guitar. Sure, I'd be glad to. Listen to this. Well, Maurice, oh, excuse me, thank you. I just been handed a note, Reese. It says, uh, find out what Maurice is doing now, and it's signed your wife. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't put that past me. <laughs> now, we've been talking about you doing club dates, but you've been doing a great deal of recording, too, have you not? Well, that's right. I do quite a bit of recording now in the jingle uh, recording business here in Dallas, which, as you know, is one of the, uh, the biggest jingle uh, recording places in the United States. Yes, it is. The Dallas area does a great deal of jingle work, and... Uh, now, a jingle, of course, is the little singing or musical bit of business instilled inside a commercial which uh, sells a product. So you're kept pretty busy. Uh, just about day and night between working the factory and playing the circuit around the Dallas area and then in the recording business, I'm kept pretty busy. I have seen with my eyes and heard with my ears the fine job you do both in building and playing a steel guitar. How about your own recording projects? Well, I've recorded some things on my own other than this, uh, but I'm primarily doing a lot of recording work for even some religious things now, and uh, just uh, more or less a backup man on a lot of work that's being done here in Dallas now. Then we can look forward to more albums from you in the future, then. I'm sure you can. Well, of course, it's a pleasure to enjoy a man who's happy at his work, as you obviously are, and it's a double pleasure to listen to a man while you enjoy his work. And so thank you once again, Maurice Anderson, for being here today. And let's give a listen to this great cut from your new album series. Thank you, Brian. 
Thank you.